All right, now we're gonna get ready to move on to the library, it seems. Ready to move on to the next car? No way, dang damn it! I'm just playing. <laughs> you gotta wreck a freaking varmint! <laughs> Actually, you know what? We need. We, I gotta play this out at least once for this. <laughs> I can fly, slap, I can fly it back, car and that car and that rock a lot of. Oh man, that's so fitting. All right, let's go. You got it, partner. Onwards and upwards and all around towns. Hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough so far. I'm enjoying it. It's not bad. We're at the library card now. <laughs> Our truth. <laughs> Oh, this stuff is getting heavy. I'll dump one we don't need. Everyone's favorite journalist reporter here. Amy Rose is high on the scoop. I'm had now. You've been famously helpful. Already? Before you go, ask me what I wanted to give you your presents. My presents? You're both so sweet. Thank you. Hmm, Vector, we, we seem to have more guests. Amy, there you are. Uh, have you found any leads? Oh, the detective pair needs help on the birthday girl. Uh, she knows everyone's allowed to be sassy on her birthday. This type of suit just needs you and Nora. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Don't worry, Sonny. I already want to avenge you and quick. But how are you going to leave? The duck door is locked. Oh, you doubt the birthday king? Shink. <laughs> the birthday girl has the master key. Right, right. The birthday girl get the birthday key. Oh, of course. It's a, a birthday privilege. I'll solve this case before anyone else. Bye! Amy may be hasty, but she is thorough. Now, what are you two doing? I'm looking mighty suspicious, I say. I'm a detective, so I can't beat a murderer. And I am just a man who got edgy McFartness, but I don't call myself Mr. Edgy. Uh, I'm here to ask anyone's hungry. <laughs> Stop! I kill for a chicken parmesan right about now. Maybe kill isn't the right language to use right now. I'm Vector, the butcher. I'm last to the animal raw meat. And I'm Espio, the poet. Ah, poetry. A renaissance message from a poet to the reader meant to challenge their delicate perspectives with the most rhythm of prose. Can I hear some? Sure. Um, teardrops in the spring. Can you hear me sing? La la la, di 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 di. <laughs> and I look at tails. I love it. <laughs> what was that? I have more if you like. Cherry blossoms in the spring. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied for now. Thanks. At least these rhymings, I suppose. Mister Edgy and I here to establish the both of your alibis. Can you walk us through what happened with Amy? After Amy had everyone leaving at the dining car? Oh, sure, it's simple. We just explained to Amy, actually. We were all set to the ridge. Ridge base, yeah. Ridge base, shadow, and Sonic all passed through the library car. I'm trying not to laugh when I'm doing this sound vector. I have to give him this voice. Where Amy told us to ask me to stay. I promptly picked up a book. Off the shelves and made myself comfortable. Vector got bored, so he left to see what Uncle Knuckles up to in the saloon car. Yep. Where was Rouge? What happened to see the lipstick stain on the glass cup at the saloon car? Rouge came out of the library car, seemingly looking for something. Then she went to search the saloon car. She came back after shortly and heard of shouts, No way at the brochure stand over there. But she left back to the casino car before Shadow came through and locked the door. I wonder what she found. She's obviously been on a hunt for something. After Rouge left, Shadow walked through the casino car. There entered the library car and locked the door behind him. More importantly, why Shadow been looking, been locking doors? Shadow walked through the library car to salute car where Knuckles and I were playing games. His sister showed us a super monkey ball. I got so engrossed by the running monkey action, I already noticed when Shadow left the saloon car. I guess when he went through the library to the casino car again, locking the door behind him. Then he returned to the lounge car where he was meant to be stationed. When Vector came back, he realized Knuckles had locked the door to the saloon car. We were stuck in the library car. Then that was where the train speed up. 
We were worried about the bookshelves falling on us, but we got through it all right. We sat in the trap until Amy arrived asking questions. She is the one who told us Son wondered Sonic. And yeah, that's all that happened. Hmm. All with these locked doors, and it seems that Vector and Espinel couldn't have left the library or the saloon car. Thank you both for your cooperation. We're just gonna peek around and we'll return with any questions. If you return any meat, I'll chop it up for you. And if you like to be serenaded with a poem, I got you covered too. Thanks, guys. Their aisles might seem solid, but where should we search for clues? Well, we're looking for the evidence to prove that they were staying true. We need to confirm Vector's reason for leaving his post and determine Espio is actually in a library card reading. It's all a task, but we can do it! Let's get to the bottom of this, Tails! Absolutely! Alright, so let's see. Hmm, here is a fallen books! So many books on the ground, I wish I had time to pick them all up. Sadly, I have no interest in picking up these books. A lot of these books were knocked by the trees, knocked down by the fuse speeding up. But Rouge pulled a lot of these two in search for something. What a reckless behavior. I feel sorry for those poor books. The spies are creasing. They're opening too far. This kid seems to feel the empathy for everything. Oh, brochures! There are the travel destinations I did here, like amusement parks, caverns, hotel, restaurants. Oh! Mr. Edgy, look at this. There are a couple maps here. It seems to be the map of the library card. The books are all characterized by genre, which is listed here. I love a good overhead map. Let's take it. Should we take the brochure about the cave, too? Look, there's stalactites. Nah, leave it. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Nobody shares my fondness for K's. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> a child hanging precariously on a tree branch. And our text below reads, Hang in there. Wow, I really need to see this. It's a little child hanging there refusing to let his wings fly to safety. Because choosing the hard way is often the most rewarding. That's beautiful. If this child can stick through the principles and find a strength, then I could too. There's no way that that much I can put into this poster. Right? Let's see. What's with the butt right here? Oh, poor thing. The arm is struggling to clean up this car. To be fair, I wouldn't be the clean without this car. I don't this the best either. Let's just leave it alone and do its thing. Yeah, probably for the best. Hmm. Round three. Something's always hidden in the trash. Let's check there. I hate to say it. There's nothing there. <sighs> I really thought there would be something there. Mr. Edgy, are you sad that there was nothing in the trash bin? N no, no, I'm all right. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure there'll be something hidden in the next trash bin we find. <laughs> you really think so? Uh, yeah. You just gotta stay optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These trash bins may have a secret. I'm sure of it. Mr. Edgy, you're pretty on the conventional. But I like that. Was that supposed to be a compliment? <laughs> Alright, uh, let's check out this globe. A globe of our marvelous planet. I haven't traveled around much. The islands are fun and all, but I like to visit some other countries. They're a lot of fun, honestly. Plenty of wonderful people, shops. The food can't be beat either. Ah, sound perfect for a vacation. The conductor was talking about Spangolia, if you ever been there. I have, actually. If you're ever to be visiting, to visiting, be sure to stop by the university and say hello to Professor Pickle. Oh my god, Professor Pickle. He's, a, yeah, he's actually, yeah, he's a little Sonic Unleashed. <laughs> it's kind of cool that they actually do, a, like, a little, um, like, connection with Sonic Unleashed. So, uh, Sonic Unleashed is canon. I kind of figured it was. Great game, but the game gets hard, though. He'll tell you everything about the area and makes a scrumptious, yeah, scrumptious pickle or cucumber sandwiches or something like that. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. This group is all about everything. It has been everywhere, haven't they? Let's see. That's the door that was locked. 
Shroud was supposed to be walking through the library car before leave it going into the saloon car. Huh? It's unlocked. When Shadow left the library car, he locked the door on the way out. There's gotta be a reason he's doing this. Should we make it out of it? Yeah, I do believe we should. Let's check here. Wow, I wish I could stop and look at all these books. But Sonic needs me. No time to rest. Alright, then let's move on then. Well, I mean, I don't know people will hurt. He's scavenging through the books like titles excitedly. He's like a kid in a candy shop, or in this case, a genius train in a a genius in a train library. That's odd. I know some of these books have fallen out of the fall on the floor and everything, but every book on the shelves is in alphabetical order except this one. It's the user guide to the Mirage Express, the trailer we're currently on. Do you think someone found it on the ground and put it back? Maybe. But it is interesting. Let's make a note of this. I think we found enough clues. Let's go interrogate Vector and Esper and find out what really happened. All right. Did you bring me any meat to chop? I may be a butcher, but I was confiscated meat cleaver before getting on the train. They confiscated it. You actually tried to bring a knife on the train? I'm a man of all density, Tails. Without my knife, I'm just a chef in the ketchup stain apron, not a butcher. I think I don't know how to knife it. We definitely think you were the murderer. <laughs> what if I hit a knife? You know, I'm not the biggest fan of the line of thought. All right, let's get started. So, you two, you two don't believe us, eh? It's not that I don't trust either of you, but I wouldn't have a proper detective without ex examining the validities of your alibis. Mr. Edgy and I heard to confirm two things. Why Vector left to play games with Knuckles, and Assassin's is really was into reading in the library car. Vector, we'll start with you. Why did you leave the library car to visit Knuckles? Were you prepared to present evidence if you need? Oh, that's easy. I got four. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wasn't entertaining them either. It seems Vector enjoys being social. Plus, we were interacting in a mingle. I remember the arcade machine was in a saloon car, so I figured I'd go check it out. This seems out of the lineup with the information we gathered with Knuckles. That that brings our attention to you, Espio. Rouge entered the library card, found something, then left. You said immediately started reading, but you were actually reading the entire time you were in the library card? Of course he was! Once Espio started reading, he doesn't stop till it's done. I say that. It must have been a good read. What was the book? Israel don't know only that, detective. Let the man live. What if it's as embarrassing? What kind of things do you think I read? If you won't talk, I have a hunch of what book it might be. Mr. Edgy, can you help me out? All right, uh, Mr. Edgy. What was the book of that's for you to keep reading? You was reading this one. <laughs> it was actually just like a so a flash of the item in their faces, and then just like Emmanuel, you think Espio was reading instructions? What argument can you possibly have to support this? All right, and here we go again. I gotta pay attention now, like the rings increase, and so does the game itself. Oh, platforms full! Oh no, they got blood sauce too! Oh boy. Yay! No, they got swing blades. Oh boy. I got enough rings. I just gotta make sure I don't get hit. Or oh, four. Whew, okay, good. Perfect run. Yeah! I still got my Sanx skills, even though Sanx's dead. There are books scattered around the floor for sure, but the remaining books on the shelves were all in alphabetical order. All except this manual. Meaning someone, at the very least, picked the manual up and put it back in the incorrect place. There we go, that's the face I wanted to see. 
That's all I wanted to see. <laughs> the lack of attention to detail is normally like you, SBO. Hey, now! You don't have to be assaulting my power like this! Calm down, Vector. I know you mean well, but I can handle myself. Apologies, SBO! A butcher and a poet, friendship can form anywhere. That is indeed the book I was reading. Raj Express Manual. Trains are cool. In that case, we would like to ask you a few questions about the manual. Mr. Edgy, you want nine. <coughs> Could you ask Espio some questions about the manual? Just flip the page and ask away. Oh, I see. Quiz on Espio about the manual and prove he read it. Which page should I quiz him on? Um, let's do page 14. Okay. Um... What efficient and extremely accurate technology was installed to assist to keep the train spotless? Robotic arms. Dirty events that they can perform various tasks and are responsible for cleaning up trash and messes afterwards. I remember the conductor was saying that the train company didn't clean itself. Though I had a feeling that the train company just didn't want to hire any janitors. The robotic arms can also detect weapons or explosives being brought onto the train, ensuring passenger safety. See if SBO would like to ace that question, Mr. Edgy. Hit him with another one. Okay, okay. Which page did I choose? Okay, let's pay, choose page 89. Alright. <laughs> what is the Mirage Express cancel policy? No refunds or you'll be charged for no show fees. This does not apply if you're over the age of 65. Jeez, the person who made this rule must have been over 65. <laughs> I know, right? Last one, Mr. Edgy. Let's see SBO K go three for three. Gotcha. Which place should I choose last? Alright, let's go for a big one. What was the implement to support the conductor duties to and ease general train obligations? An intelligent data processing system. It works in a tandem with the conductor to ensure the smooth travel for the guests. I remember this. The train had an autopilot. It can't access it with a full speed of capabilities without the conductor present. Now, did I pass your little test? Yes. Totally. You were wild and able to retain all the information so quickly. You should be working here instead of me. A poet's brain is often surprising. I don't often be ready to be bragging about that. You clearly read the manual for those answers and feel far too specified. Far too specified to be guesses. And you both have the nerve to question my body like that. Don't you? Don't we want to be supporting you folks who read? You have to admit, though, reading the entire time a murder occurs does sound a bit suspicious, even true. But he answered all my questions calmly. That is very impressive. No, no. I understand everyone's cautious attitudes. Vector was the only one I see. Uh, yeah, Vector was the only one you see me reading after all. My alibi is hard to sustain, despite being the truth. Well, you definitely read through the manual, so I suppose we can... Espio, is that true? Vector was the only one to see you reading? Yes, that is correct. Problem? Frankly, I don't believe that could be true. We have the evidence to back it up. Mr. Edgy? He always put me on the spot. Okay, Mr. Edgy. What if we're a piece of evidence or we like to... Someone else we saw Espio reading. But what? This lock. Or this map. Let's see. You ever had a map? Or... Hmm. Chateau's lock? Please pray tell. What does this have to do with anything? We're up, Mr. Edgy. Let's get our argument together. Alright, here we go again. Do, 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 do. Ah! Oh, how do we have it up? All right, I gotta do it again. This is gonna be tricky. Considered my time wasted. Let's give it a go. Yeah, this is gonna be tricky. Whew. 
All right. Okay, let's all right. Let's have some hard tales. Shadow walked through the, the library card to get to the saloon card, where he set the original high score on the arcade machine. Yeah, but I ended up beating it. It wasn't a high score for long. Crocs are natural gamers. Espel said he saw Shadow enter the library card, but he mentioned nothing about Shadow's return. He only mentions that Vector came back. When Shadow left Knuckles and Vector in the saloon car, Espio was fully seated reading his book for a good while at this point. <laughs> we know Shadow had to walk back through the library car when he left the saloon car. So there is absolutely no way Shadow and Espio did not notice one or another on Shadow's return trip. Uh, I mean, it was a simple slip up. I was just fully immersed in my book and I didn't know the shadow. You're telling me sounds of the door the opening and locking wouldn't cause you to look up? Well, I... You see? <laughs> gotcha. I can sense Despio's desperation here, defending me that the argument that was reading the book the entire time isn't easy. So if you didn't see Shadow returning from the saloon car to lock all the doors, then at the moment, what are you really in the library car at all? But how would SBO leave? The shadow, the shadow locked all the doors and had no one saw SBO in the saloon car. It's a mystery, my dear Ed, Mr. Edgy, and one that I would love for SBO to solve. You gotta believe me. As the cold name manner is vanishing, I was so involved in my book, I didn't notice Shadow passed back through the library car. Honest! When Vector returned, I had to tap on the shoulder to get my attention. Yeah, I think I remember doing that. I must have my friend's death, so I'll ask you again, SPO. If you weren't at this time with Shadow C you reading, then how did you leave the library car? I wasn't. I didn't. Why doesn't it seem right to me? Tails definitely feels like he's onto something. But I don't see it. Was SPO simply sitting reading? Or he has something to vanish to not notice Shadow's return in the library car? What should I do? Hmm. Should I defend Espio or Jordan Tails? <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to defend Espio. I have to make sure our guest is well taken care of. I have to speak up. Tails! We have a piece of evidence that can answer all of our problems. Alright, my fellow associate. Lay it on me. What's the piece of evidence you show the Shadow and SBO couldn't have not seen one another? The map! Alright, now let me get my thoughts in order. Now, let's think. And play. And I forgot to jump! Nah, not because. Let me give another go. Hold on. I'm gonna keep thinking. Give me a moment. My brain start like sizzle and fizzle. Oh God. Oh my god, I was too close. Alright, let's clear this up. The library map. Oh! Oh, I see! Shut it, phone. I gotta solve this part and defend SBO. See the exits? They're right across from me. It's a, a straight path. If Shadow walked on a straight path, there's a way to SBO and Shadow couldn't have seen one another. Looks like you have a point there. Where, where exactly on the map, you mean? Let's see. Where can you see SBO when you not see him? Hmm. Hmm. That's a bookcase. I think Shadow would have mentioned it. Shoot. I'm not sure anyone's walking through the library before. Where do you be seated? Hmm. That desk is huge. I'm sure Shadow would see SBO if he's reading there. 
right. Hmm. Add the bookcase. Hmm. All right, that's a okay. This is the top map of the view, so let's see. Not quite. Okay, this is where yeah, this is where you come in, and this is where SBO is reading, but it won't, it won't show. Not quite. Right here. Gotta be here. Interesting. That's where I was sitting to read my book. I can see you see, I can think of this. When I went to turn for the salute car, Espinel was in the same spot. One moment, folks. That confirms it then. You see, Shadow and Espio couldn't have seen each other from this spot. Because the bookcase was in the way. There's no way Shadow could have seen Espio or vice versa. It makes a lot of sense. Why you never mentioned the Shadow's return, Espio? There's just no way you could have seen him. I apologize for losing my cool back there. I felt like I was grasping desperate to tell the truth. But I'm glad you all believe me now. Your alibi isn't also all tight. But I have no further points. Thank you for both for answering all our questions. We did it! Another pair of alibi is validated. Yay! Too many locked doors to worry about. But I'm glad everything is strengthening itself out in the end. Well, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna crash here for a bit. These chairs are so comfy. Likewise, I could use a breather. Sadly, our work is a done. I have plenty of questions for Rouge, and especially Shadow. Oh, it seems that the door to the next car is open. Amy must have kept it open when she passed through earlier. Then that's our next. That's our cue to leave. We'll see you later, Vector and Espio. Give him heck! If you need to meet Chop, say the word. I'll keep my apologies sharp for you, Muff. A murderer is on a loose. Our doors are getting locked. Tick tock. Tick tick tock goes the clock. While our heroes are in the caboose. At this point, I'm feeling confident now. Our detective abilities. We're really doing this! Come on, Mr. Edgy. Let's see what's next. Go, bang! Alright, so, man. That was a trippy one, though. But, yep. Another quick little mystery has been solved. But we still haven't know what's going on with Rouge and Shadow all of a sudden. Like I said, you got to stick to it. Stay and see what's going to happen next, folks.